Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of Under the Olive Tree. My name's Gem, I'm a knitting designer, yarn dyer, and owner of Under the Olive Tree Knits.com, which is a knitting website where you can find uh, hand dyed yarns, knitting patterns, kits, tutorials, accessories, um, tools, etc. etc. Um, I am a self-confessed knitting addict, rarely a day goes by where I don't pick up the needles and yeah, I absolutely love to knit. I live in Huntingdon, um, which is near Cambridge in the UK and I live with my husband David and our three cats. Um, so I've been designing knitting patterns for nearly eight years now and the things that I like to design the most are accessories, so shawls, wraps, socks, um, smaller items. Um, but the one thing that I really love to design are patterns that showcase a skein of hand dyed yarn. So those skeins of four ply sock yarn, um, fingering weight yarn, the ones that you go to a yarn show or a yarn shop and you just fall in love with the colours but you have no idea what to make with it. Um, so I like to design mainly shawl patterns that will really showcase off the colours um, in a skein of hand dyed yarn. So you'll find lots of one skein shawl patterns on the website um, and in a future episode I will do a show and tell of all the uh, one skein shawl patterns that I have. Um, but if you'd like to grab yourself a free one, you can get a free sun glitter shawl pattern when you sign up to the website, which it's a one skein asymmetric shawl. Um, it's really easy to knit. It's stockinette and then there's sections of yarn over knit two together lace. And there's all tutorials linked in the pattern as well. So you can get that pattern for free when you sign up to the newsletter. I don't have a sample to hand to show you, but I will pop a picture here so you can see what the shawl looks like. So I'll pop a link to the newsletter below where you can download that shawl pattern. So I thought it would be fun to start this podcast. Uh, the idea behind it is that I'm going to show you new patterns as they're released. I've actually got two new patterns coming out in November. One is a large two skein wrap pattern, so a rectangular wrap, and the other is a one skein shawl pattern, and that pattern is gonna be free for the duration of November. Um, and that pattern also is um, being released in conjunction with the Cambridge Yarn Festival, which um, I am one of the organisers. So Camilla from Knitting Needle Lane is my yarn partner in crime. And together we, um, we are the organisers behind the Cambridge Yarn Festival. So this year we've had quite a few events. We've done a couple of virtual yarn shows. We've done a Knit and Natter in the park in Cambridge. We had a yarn retreat at Wells Next the Sea in summer, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, and coming up in November, we have got a virtual yarn show. So from Monday the 7th of November until Thursday the 10th, from 7 till 9pm, that's UK time, every evening, we have got a whole host of um, talented yarn dyers, yarn shop owners, textile artists, yarn influencers, project bag makers. Um, we've got an amazing lineup of people who are gonna hop onto the Cambridge Yarn Festival Instagram and um, show us what they do and, and talk about um, their businesses. So that's gonna be really, really exciting. So if you want to find out more, you can take a look at the Cambridge Yarn Festival website, which is www.cambridgeyarnfestival.co.uk. You can also follow us on Instagram at Cambridge Yarn Festival to stay up to date. So the agenda, the full agenda will come out next week, detailing who's on when. Um, I think I'll be going live on the Thursday and that's when I'm gonna be releasing the shawl pattern. So if that's something you're interested in, then do be sure to check it out. Um, and then after the yarn festival, so next, on the Saturday the 12th, we're actually hosting a yarn crawl around London as well. So we've got three amazing yarn shops lined up that we're going to visit. We're going to start off at Tribe Yarns in Richmond. Um, we're then going to go to um, Beautiful Knitters and then we're going to go to Wild and Woolly. So we're going to have a day of yarn shopping, um, which is going to be great fun. So tickets for this event have sold out now, but we are going to be running another one next year. 
I uh, can't remember the exact date for that. It'll be in November. Um, I'll pop the details below so you can keep an eye out for that if it's something that you might be interested in joining next year too. Um, oh, and as well, next year as Cambridge Yarn Festival, we are planning a real life event. So in on the 10th of June, Saturday the 10th of June, in St Ives in Cambridgeshire, we are going to be having our very first real life yarn festival. So if you have a yarny business or a yarn related business, or if you know somebody that does, uh, then the applications for the yarn show are currently open. So I'll pop a link below where you can um, take a look at the form and sign up if that's something that you're interested in. Um, it will be on Saturday the 10th of, no uh, Saturday the 10th of June uh, 2023 in Cambridgeshire. So yeah, really excited about that. So of course I'll keep you up to date with um, all the developments, developments on the um, Cambridge Yarn Festival. Um, so yeah, uh, so today I think I'm going to show you some um, colourways that have just gone into the website this week. So I had um, quite a busy yarn dyeing week last week where I dyed up lots of yarns and the website's um, quite stocked at the moment, which is good. There's lots of lovely yarns on there um, and I've um, kind of topped all the repeatable colourways up. Excuse me. Um, and I've just added a couple more this week. So uh, I'll start with, so I do tend to do quite a few one-offs when I do yarn dyeing because I hate to see any dye go to waste. So if there's any dye left over, I tend to throw in um, an extra skein or so just to soak up the colour um, and um, so none of it goes to waste. So I do have quite a lot of, of one-of-a-kind skeins um, that's, come out beautifully but unfortunately can never be repeated so you can take a look at the full range on the website under um yarns one of a kind skeins but um i'll just show you a few that have gone into the shop this week so first of all there's this one which is a sparkle shop sparkle shop sparkle sock yarn and this is called aqua shimmer because you can see it's on a lovely sparkly base um it's kind of a the colour's not coming out too well here, but it's more greeny blue, cause so it's more of a turquoisey aqua colour. Um, and you can see here. Um, so this is the four ply sock base. So it is 75% merino, 20% nylon, and 5% silver stellina, which gives it this lovely sparkle. And you can see there it's got quite a lot of um semitonal colours in there, so that will knit or crochet up rather nicely. So that's um uh, what did I say? Aqua Sparkle. Aqua Shimmer? Aqua Shimmer, I think. Um, and then another one of a kind is this one here, which again is on the Sparkle Sock base. And this is called Blue Steel because it's kind of grey, kind of blue. It's depending on which light you look at it in, it's um, it could be one or the other. So it's, um, is it grey? Is it blue? Who knows? But it's very pretty. It's um, again got lots of tonal colours going through there and that actually I think will work really nicely with the aqua shimmer. Those two together would make something really really pretty um, but they are one of a kind so um, there's only one of each. So that's those two. Um, I've also been dyeing up some silky yarns. I have um, I used up some leftover purple for this gorgeous light kind of lilac-y colour which is really really pretty. Um, I can't remember what the colourway is called, maybe called pale lilac on the website um, but it is, it's on the silk and merino base which is 50% silk, 50% merino and there's 400 metres per skein um, with the sock yarns there's 400 metres per skein as well. So um, and again really quite nice and tonal um, lovely purple colour so that would make a really nice one skein shawl too um so that's that one and I also have kind of similar colours I guess in purples and blues so this is on the Peristera four ply base so this is um 45% silk and 55% blue face Leicester so it's a really Oh, it's a beautiful yarn it, it really is lovely and it knits up beautifully as well um 
and this has shades of blue and purple. Uh, I think there's actually two of these available on the website. Um, and yeah, again, 400 meters per skein, so that will make a lovely one skein shawl. I do have um, some shawl patterns on the website which work really nicely with semi-tonal yarns. Uh, if you look for the Shades Of collection, there's currently four shawl patterns in the collection that really show off a semi-tonal yarn. Um, so yeah, any of these actually would work well with those patterns. And then I also have this one which is called Snow Capped. So this is greens with kind of more natural yarn coming through so it's greens and kind of creams and pales but you get um there's like dark and there's a uh, lighter areas in it it's um again a really pretty colorway so all of these are currently one of a kinds so if you like the look of those then do um do take a look on the website um, and i've also got a new repeatable colorway as well that's just um come onto the website which is this one and this is called honeycomb so this is this colorway is um, yellows, it's kind of mustard yellows, pale yellows, and then you get these lovely sparkly, sparkly, speckly sections as well. So you can see there, you get the um, speckles running throughout. So this is on the four ply sock base. However, I can show you what it looks like knitted up. So this is, um, this is a sample that I knitted up last week um, but this is on the sport weight merino base so it's a slightly thicker yarn but you kind of get the idea of how the colorway knits up it's really beautiful golden yellows with browns um, with flashes of orange here and there um, so yeah that's kind of how it how it knits up um, this pattern is the beekeeper shawl so it's one of my older patterns so it's available on Ravelry or on the website but um, I have given it a bit of a refresh this week so this is a new sample um, and I've kind of uh, just made the pattern a bit more reader friendly it's, it's one of my older patterns so I've kind of updated it to fit more into my current style uh, so if you like the look of this pattern then um, kind of wait a week or so and there will be a brand new revised pattern that, that comes out um, but I do need to get some photos of the new sample because I literally finished it you know I finished it on Sunday and blocked it on Monday so it's kind of fresh off the needles so I do need to get um, some new pattern photos for this one so yeah that's the beekeeper shawl um, if you keep an eye on my Instagram which is at olive tree gem um, then you'll kind of get notified when the pattern's um, re-released. Um, so that's it for the yarns. Um, so next up, I thought it could be quite fun if we did some yarn dyeing. So I've got two colourways that I need to dye up this afternoon. One is Lavender Fields, which is one of my more popular colourways. It's um, kind of pale blues, purples and greens, and it's got some speckles on it. And the other one is called Red Wine by the Fire. And that is a colorway of darker reds with flashes of orange and yellow. And again, some speckles on there. So yeah, I thought it could be quite fun. If you want to join me and see how those yarns are dyed, then um, yeah, let's go. So I'm going to start off by dyeing up some lavender fields. So I've got my yarn soaking here. So this is, um, a base it's a four ply sock yarn it's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon um, and it's been soaking in there uh, for a couple of hours so it's now ready to dye so for this colorway I'm going to be using a chip and dip tray which is great for yarn dyeing because you can put different colors in each of the compartments and then kind of like lay the yarn across so it soaks up the colors um, so this is what I use for lavender fields and as it's not raining I'm going to be doing this outside so let's go. I use landscape dyes for my yarn dyeing. They are acid dyes um, which means they've got citric acid in them which helps the colours to stick to the yarns and it also it gives really nice vibrant colours. So these are the dyes that I use. Um, if you're in the UK they are available from Wingham Woolwork. 
Because I want quite pale colours for this um, colourway, I'm going to use my smaller spoons. So I'm going to start with... some blue. Just add a little bit of water to that and then give it a good old mix. And I'm just going to top that up to half a pint using the water that the yarn's been soaking in. Give that another mix. There, and then we're going to do the same with the other three colours. So here are the colours all good to go. I've actually moved it onto the patio as this one gets a little bit messy. So now it's time to add the yarn. So do this one two at a time. So I'm just going to pop those in there and then just lay the yarns oops, around there and just squish them in. <laughs> See how messy it gets this one. Goes everywhere. Okay. Get those blended a bit. That's just going to go on the washing line. Just let that dry off for a little bit. Here are the yarns drying on the line, but for this colourway, we also need to add some sprinkles. Okay, so I've just laid the yarns out here on some cling film. Um, it's a little bit windy today, which is making things a little trickier, but first of all, I'm just gonna spray the yarns. Got some citric acid mix here, which is literally just citric acid with water. So I'm just gonna spray where I want to put the sprinkles as that will help them stick a little bit better. And I'm just gonna go ahead, add some sprinkles where the color are that one that was the bottom so that's already quite damp so I'm just gonna on the bottom there so we've got some nice sprinkles on the yarn so I'm just going to wrap that up now ready to be steamed and that's now in the steamer ready to be heat set okay so next up I'm going to dye up some dark purple yarn um, it's going to be a lace yarn and I'm going to do this one before I do the red one in the fire by the fire colorway because that colorway involves black which tends to get everywhere so I'm going to leave that till last um, and do this purple one now so this is um, a nice dark purple colorway that we're going to use this one's called purple velvet on my website um, so if you've ever ordered a custom dye before, this is how your yarn gets dyed. So I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of this dye powder into the jug, and I'm just gonna mix that with some hot water. Just topped up the dye with some water that the yarn was soaking in. So I think that's about three quarters of a pint maybe. Let's give that another really good mix. So I've got a pan of water here which I'm just going to add the dye to and again give that a give that another really good mix. And in she goes. To get that fully submerged. 
and then I'm just going to draw that through. It's a little bit tricky today because I've got the phone in the way, but um, just make sure you move the hooks. Nice and evenly. Okay, there we go. So you can see that the yarn's dyed up quite nice and evenly, but we've still got quite a lot of colour left. So what I'm going to do is just stick that on the hob um, to heat it up, and that should exhaust um, some more of the colour. So I'm just going to do that. So I've just put the purple on the hob. Um, I'm just going to let that heat and while it heats through I'm just going to pull it through um, to make sure that it dies nice and evenly. So just coming back to the purple and you can see where it's been on the heat that that colour is nearly all exhausted. So oops, just going to turn that off for now and just let it sit and hopefully when we come back to it be pretty much done. Okay let's dye some red wine by the fire. Now this colourway is not the simplest one to do but it is very pretty so it's worth the effort. Um, so I've got a bigger tray here so again I'm going to do two at a time. Um, I've just mixed up some burgundy colour so there's one teaspoon to a pint there and I'm just going to pour that straight into the tray and then go and grab some yarn. So now I'm going to add the yarn. Again, this is um, four-ply sock yarn, so it is 75% merino and 25% nylon. So I'm just going to lay that in there. It's going to tilt that slightly. It's on a, the tray's on a bit of a tilt for some reason. So that's going to lay that on there. I want to keep some of the areas of the yarn kind of natural as we're going to be adding some more colours to, to it. So let's just do that through. Okay, that's looking nice. So I'm going to add some more colours now. Right, I'm back with some little ramekins of colour. So I've got a yellow here, a red, and an orange. And I'm going to use some pipettes just to put the colour onto the yarn. So I'm going to start with the yellow because that's the lightest and I'm going to pick white patches and just basically squeeze it on. So this colourway is quite fun to do actually. Just throw that colour on there. Try and get patches of bright yellows I put quite a lot on because once I add the other colours as well it's quite nice to blend some of the yellows with the purples and oranges okay. So now I'm going to add, in the same way, I'm just going to add splashes of orange and red as well. So I'm just going to take... the sprinkles so I've got some orange sprinkles here so I'm just gonna put those on and also some yellow okay 
So what I'm going to do now is just pull the yarns out because I don't want I don't want that um, colour to contaminate when I turn them over. And then I'm going to take this colour, just pop that in a jug. We can use that. Oops. We can use that at the end. So what I'm going to do now is just move the hook a little bit and just relay the yarn but I want to keep some of those bright yellows so I'm going to lay it in a horseshoe and just tuck some of those bright colours underneath keep that white that'd be nice so we keep those nice flashes of colour that through Do the same for the second one. So I'm just going to move the tie so we don't get any resistance. It's got caught. And then just lay that out. In there. So I want to keep try and get that white if I can. some of the yellow and the colour flashes in but generally I try and keep those if I can. Okay and now it's time for the final pot. So to finish this one I'm just going to go in with black speckles so I'm going to put quite a, quite a lot on. They will spread going to be quite generous with those. Make sure I get those white bits. And then I'm just going to let that sit for five minutes for the speckles to soak in. But um, yeah, looking good. Here is red wine by the fire, just drying on the line. Oh, you can see those lovely flashes of colour. So what I'm going to do now is just pop those in the steamer so that the colour is all set um, and then we'll take another look at them in a little bit. Let's check on that purple, so look at that, that's pretty much exhausted all of the dye there. So I'm just going to hang that on the line so the excess water just comes out and then that's ready for steaming. So rather than that, let that water go to waste, I'm actually going to reuse it um, for a, another skein. So I used the leftover burgundy from the first batch of red wine by the fire um, for the second batch. And then when I drained off the second batch, I only had this left, which I think is going to be a really nice pale pink colour. So I'm going to add that into the Good old mix, and then I'm going to add a skein of four ply silk and merino in there. And if my calculations are correct, that's going to come out as a really lovely pale pink, um, which is one that I call blush on the website. So I'm hoping this color, this leftover colorway, is going to make a lovely blush. So let's grab the skein and see. I'm so annoyed it didn't record um, but basically I put the um, silk and merino yarn into the leftover burgundy and as you can see it's come out this really beautiful pale pink colour and you can see already actually when that dries that's going to have a lovely semi-tonal colour to it. Um, really pleased with that. So that was literally just the leftover burgundy that's created this lovely semi-tonal pink colour. 
Okay, so what should we do with our leftover colours today? We've got this lovely pale blue. I've got a tiny bit of the um, dark purple colour. And then I've got a tiny bit of yellow, some red and some orange from the red wine by the fire colourway. So I've got a skein of sparkle sock that's been soaking. So I'm going to use that um, and let's see what happens. Right, I'm going to throw the sparkle sock in there. You can see that's taken on the blue really nicely. And then what I'm going to do is just put that tiny bit of purple on the top, kind of blend it in a little bit. Let's relay it. Okay, so I don't know what's going to happen here when we add the yellow and the red and the orange but what I'm going to do is create a little well in the middle there and just pop the yellow in so it's got kind of room to move and then just move the yarn around a bit it's looking nice uh, yeah I like that I might try that again with the red let's relay it make a little well in the middle interesting it's a little bit more red than there was yellow so I think that's gonna oh look at that it's looking really good though. um so I might as well do the same with the orange to finish to see where this goes pop the orange in Nice. Picked out some really nice colours. You can never really tell though until it's dry how it's going to look. So I'm just going to pop that on the line um, and then I'll have a look at that in a little bit. So the yarns have all been steamed now. This is the pretty pale pink. is the dark purple lace. Lavender fields. This is the end of dye day skein. So this is the one that took on all those leftover colors. red wine by the fire so yeah all we need to do now is just wait for those to dry um, and they will be up on the website so that's a wrap for episode one of the podcast i hope you enjoyed it Please do let me know if there's anything you'd like to see in future episodes, um, such as other colourways. Um, but for now, I will say goodbye. But before I do, as a thank you for sticking with me, you can use the code YouTube50 for 50% off any of my patterns in Ravelry. Um, and that code will be valid until the end of October. So YouTube50, that'll get you 50% off any of my patterns in Ravelry. And I'll pop the link below. Take care. Bye-bye.